Hi everyone, today video will be about 5G physical downlink control channel BDCH. BDCH actually is the heart of their interface and proper optimization of BDCH resources is vital for the network as BDCH congestion or blocking or even coverage or quality issues which is high, high block error rate for example can have a severe impact on many KPIs and services such as for example voice over NR, even Volti and latency as well because if you're assuming that you have a congestion or blocking and so on, so the users, users have to wait in the queue for longer time until it receives the resource allocation. So this can have a high impact on everything, including latency and uh, voice services. Let's move, move forward. Okay, today, this will be the content of today, uh, today uh, video. We'll be covering this main function, differences between 4G and 5G, and how the frequency time domain is being allocated for the BDCH resources. Then we'll go through BDCH resource mapping on other words, how the users is going to decode the BDCH resources. Then lastly, we'll be ended by BDCH beam farming feature, which is actually new in 5G. It was not there before in 4G. Before in 4G, we didn't have this concept, especially in TDD. It's a concept of the BDCH beam farming. It was mainly about the BDCH. Moving forward, okay, what is the primary function of, of BDCH? Actually, the primary function of BDCH is the resource allocation. It's informing the users about uh, the resources, what kind of resources, how many, for example, resource blocks are going to be used by BDCH or BUSH, where are these resources are located in the, in the time domain, for example, which symbols, how many symbols, what is the slot uh, location and so on. Let, let me give you a, a brief about the, uh, each of these parts. So initially, the resource allocation is being transfer transferred from the BTS to the E through something called DCI, downlink control information. This DCI can have several contents, many contents. I'm just giving some sum a summary of these contents here. For example, the first one it's about the frequency domain resource assignment. This like kind of the 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 DCI is delivering information to the UE to tell him, for example, how many resource blocks are going to be used by BDCH or BUSH. Then you will have the same for the time domain resource assignment. This part is that it will inform the UE, for example, which slot, how many symbols is going to be used and where and so on. For example, starting symbol, number of located symbols and slot offset. Let me give you like, let's visualize this example for us just to understand it further. For example, in, in, in this example here, we can see the users receive the DCI, he decoded the CI information and at the first symbol on the, of this frame here, and he received this one index, uh, this table. Uh, this table actually is configured RC configured table, so already the UE is known about this table. So once, for example, he received within the DCI that the index is two for this BDCH allocations, this means for the UE that he need to go and look into this table, he will understand that the, in this case, he need to go for a slot offset one. Slot offset one means that his start slot will be at slot one. So this one slot zero, then he will be going starting from here, from a slot one. Then for example, here is telling him the starting symbol is symbol three. This means at slot one, he will be starting at symbol three, which is zero, one, two, three. This, he know now that the BDCH will be starting at symbol three. And the last information that is telling him the la length of the symbols of BDCH, it will be four of the M symbols as mentioned here. So in this case, now the u users is being informed about the time domain resource allocation. So we'll be able to start receiving or decoding the BDCH and start doing the download and so on. Uh, secondly, it's about the modulation uh, coding and the coding scheme. The DCI also will be informing the UE about the tables which is going to be used, whether it's 64 QAM, 256 QAM, and so on. Other important information is about the HARC. For example, if the user is receiving the downlink data, he needs to send acknowledgement, right? So he needs to know where and when he is going to send this acknowledgement. This kind of information also is being delivered through the DCI. Let me give you an example for this HARC feedback timing. For example, in this, in this example here, you can see that downlink control, which is DCI or BCH is being received here. Then the user starting downlink data here downlink data to, to receive the downlink data. So once he started downlink data, he need to send acknowledgement to the BTS to just to confirm that whether he received the data or not. So he need to know when he's supposed to send the acknowledgement. So this this is the, the come the turn of DCI here. It's telling him that this downlink confirmation is telling him that you will send it at index three. Index three here refers that you will have a delta of three time slots from the current downlink data. So this is, for example, a slot. You need to count three other slots, slot one, two, three. Then this means the uplink technology will be sent at this particular slot. So the, this is like, the again, the DCI is telling him about the hard feedback timing and so on, which is also one of the very important inputs for the scheduling and so on. Moving forward, 
uh, last part here in the slide that BUCH related information that also some related information related to power control, BUCH resource indicators would be delivered through the DCI. And again, DCI, this is not the only information covered by DCI. You have many, a lot of information, but I try to cover the most important, which we usually use it in our daily optimization. Okay, moving forward, what is the main difference between 4G and 5G? Let's, let me tell you first that uh, as a function point of view, both of them is almost offering the same function, which is uh, resource allocation, which is transferring transfer through the downlink control information, DCI. Uh, however, the main difference is that in 4G, as you can see here, that the, the 4G, the BDCH uh, resource is being transmitted through the BTS over the entire bandwidth all the time. So every, all, every time, for example, if you have maximum 20 megahertz, so the BDCH will be uh, distributed across the 20 megahertz. This is, you don't have any control over it. You just have control over the number of symbols. For example, you have maximum number of symbols, three, it can be two, it can be one and so on. However, the frequency domain is being transmitted across the bandwidth. And here, as you can see here, this is the main differences because in, in 5G, now we have a more control over the frequency domain because we have this new concept what's called core set. Core set can having a less number of resource blocks for example, 24 resource block uh, over the bandwidth. And actually this, this concept, new concept has been introduced for uh, two or one main reason, which is first reason to accommodate with the bandwidth part, a new concept as well. We have this bandwidth part that small bandwidth can be, uh, can be allocated to a particular UE. And also that, as you know, that in the NR, we have a very wide band of, uh, of frequencies. For example, in middle wave, it can be up to 400 megahertz. So it's not reasonable to assume that all devices can receive such a wide bandwidth. That's why I have this kind of new concept of school core set. We'll go through more details in the next slides just to explain what is the concept more about the core set and so on. But just keep it in your mind now that the main difference between them that now in our BDCH are designed to be transmitted in a configurable control resource set, which is called core set while the 4G is being transferred, tran transferred over the entire bandwidth. Then later we'll be discussing more about the core set and search space and so on. Okay, moving forward. Now, before going to the details about the frequency and time domain resource allocation, I just need to recall some knowledge about the search space types, DCI types or formats, and also the BDCH resources. As you know that we have BDCH resources is transferred or translated into something called aggregation level and common control channel element. The BCH resources, the scheduling point of view, this size being using resources, which is the, this is the minimum unit of resources, which is called control resource element, common control resource element, control channel element, I mean, control channel element, and this is equivalent to a, a specific aggregation level. Aggregation level and control channel element have in one to one mapping. For example, this is the current available aggregation level in 5G, which is 1, 2, 4, and 8 and 16. It will be similar for control channel element. This 16 is newly introduced in 5G. Before in 4G, we have only up to eight, and this 16 will be used in extremely bad coverage areas. So the, just to give you a brief about this part, one aggregate, one con control channel element is equivalent to six REG, and this one REG is equivalent to one resource blocks. This means the one control channel element is equivalent to six resource blocks, and this one will be covering around 72 resource element because we have 12 source element per resource blocks. And if you want to know like how many bits we need to be transmitted, usually BDCH is using qubits CK, which will be transmitted two bits. So you need to multiply this value by two bits. But just keep this information to your mind that this is the current aggregation level here. And as you know that the aggregation level, for example, it's it's the higher the aggregation level, higher that control source, higher that the resource uh, uh, REG or higher the resource box. Uh, and the higher the aggregation level, this means that we have bad or worse radio condition. So usually the user at the very edge will be consuming higher aggregation level and higher control channel element because actually this would be increasing the redundancy. So accordingly, it can uh, facilitate the user to, to be able to decode WCH resources. This is one of the main reasons. And this one having many parameters which can control the aggregation level, whether to increase it, decrease it, and so on. So this is just a brief about this one. Nextly, next here, just very quick overview here about the types which we have it in the search space, DCI and mapping and so on. Okay, first, this would be important for the next slide. Just in, into your mind, to give it into your mind that we have DBCH search space. Search space in, in, in summary, it's being used by the UE to the UE is making blind detection of WCH resources or formation or DCI within the search space. 
the we will go through for the search space make blind detection until he find the the dci information and based on the DCI information he will know this uh, resource allocation uh, which is being to uh, allocated to the user he will know which kind of application type is going to use for example here we have a mapping for example here the search space we have two types of com uh, search space we have common search space which we can call it, for example, a cell uh, search space, and we have dedicated or UE cells search space. This is for particular UE. This can be de dedicated for every and single uh, UE device. So in, in general, we have uh, the type from type 0 till type 3. Each type is equivalent to a particular DCI and a, a particular application type. For example, type 0, which is a very common for 5G standalone, this will be equivalent to DCI 1.0 and SIP uh, system information type one. This I type in general we have three: zero, one, and two. Zero if for uplink uh, resource application, one for downlink resource allocation, and two, zero, one, and two, and two for the common uh, common signaling and so on, such as this uh, uh, subframe indicator and also the pre preemptive indicator and so on. This is kind of details. It's not required for the meantime. So this is just a brief in, uh, introduction. And for the common or the self spares, it requires minimum for aggregation level, while the users or dedicated uh, uh, UE specific search space, it, it can be one and two up to 16 and so on, can having less aggregation level. And this one usually for self is being transmitted in initial bandwidth, while this one is being tra transferred in the dedicated bandwidth. Just keep this information to your mind until we move the next slides to know why we have spotted these differences and so on. Okay, now moving forward now, let's move forward the, the main function uh, of core set and search space. We need to understand what it means by core set and search space and why we have this kind of information, why it's required and so on. Okay, initially I, I will tell you one information that BDCH is being transmitted, right? And the user, they have to go and uh, decode uh, and read the BDCH, blind, blind detection BDCH. But you, the user have no any prior information about the resources of the BCH resources, location or timing and so on. So they, here where is core set and search space comes into the figure. The core sets actually define the number of or the frequency domain location uh, resources. For example, how many number of resource blocks is going to be used by BCH? How many number of symbols? For example, they have 24 resource blocks, two symbols. And where is the frequency domain position of the BCH in, within the frame? Okay, this is the first part. Search space, it's just a, a small part within the core set. And search space in general just define the time domain or precise time domain. What it means by this? For example, I already aware about the frequency domain. Now I know I, the user need to know where he's supposed to go and detect or read or make blind detection for the BDCH resources. So here the search space will come into the figure. He can tell him that you can go for this particular slot and this starting symbol. This will try to visualize the next slide to make it more clear. But in, 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 in summary, the control results, uh, control, uh, core set, uh, the core set define the frequency domain resources, uh, uh, resources for the BDCH and search space, this is the timing and the user is making blind detection within the search space in order to deduce the DCI or downlink control information. Okay, and this I will be sharing this slides uh, with you in, in case if you want, like in the description of the YouTube video. Moving forward here, okay, now let's move, try to visualize what it means by frequency domain resource allocation, time domain resource allocation. Here example, I'm giving to system information block type one, which is uh, search space type zero. Okay, initially, that in the initial access, the, the user will decode the master information block and with that master information block message will be transferring some information to tell the users where he's supposed to go and detect the system information or to detect the um, BDCH resources in order to get the DCI information. So initially you will find within master information block one message called control resource set zero. This is control resource set zero. It's referred to the system information block type one. Okay. The, this one here it's referring as you can see there is index zero okay you can see this index zero is referring into a 3gbb table which is already known by the users so once the user know that this control source is zero having index zero he will go and search for this particular information uh, index zero to know the number the frequency resource allocation or forecast domain location for example index zero is referred that okay it's telling the user you will have the core set will be consisting of 24 resource blocks over two symbols, and it's having resource block offset zero. 
this uh, relative to the SSP block. This means you don't, you will be starting at the exactly same position of the SSP block as shown here. For example, index zero here, we have this SSP block, it's 20 result blocks. It's telling him that you will starting at the exact same frequency domain position of SSP block. So now the user know where he will go and make the blind detection within the core set as a location point of view. Then he, the, it's telling him this will having 24 result blocks over two sample of time. This is the first one. Let's take another example. For example, if this information is telling him that index is two, so index two, it will have again 24 and two, but however, here the source block offset is two. This means you will have uh, here minus two down here, the starting two resource blocks before the, sorry, this information, this example, next one, uh, two resource block before the SSP block. So this, this is information. Last one was four. This means you are starting four resource blocks before the SSP block. So the user will be uh, uh, informed about where he can decode the system information or the core, uh, the information related to save one and so on. Next, it's about the core set uh, or search space, sorry, search space information. Search space, as I mentioned, it defined the time domain. User now is informed about frequency domain. You know, he need now to know where he need to decode the search space and the time domain. So we'll be able to get the information about the system information block type one and accordingly can start doing the initial access and so on. So this is the same concept. <clears throat> this is within the same message you will have something called search space zero <coughs> search space zero also this is referred to the system information block uh, one this is the application type which is being used for search space zero again this one will be referring to 3gbb tables which is already known by the user as well so once he see this index two you go to this table and search for index two you will have a lot of inputs here just to make it uh, easy for you, you will have, for example, O. O, this is refers to the slot number. Let's assume this one, two. This means you will be starting from slot two uh, because this one, it's like offset from the starting of the frame. Then here is telling him that you will first symbol will be symbol zero. This means he will be starting at symbol zero. So he know that the search space where he need to make a blind detection for the BDCH resources and for the DCI information to deduce this information is within symbol zero slot two. So you will go at this particular location within the core set information, which is mentioned in the previous slide. You will be able to start making blind detection until he decode the DCI and get the information about the next step which i will be showing in the next slide as well in more details and if you uh, for this m information m just just telling him that the first slot will be having only one uh, one search space and so on and as you can see here that if you have uh, different uh, ssp blocks which is not the case in all the time maybe some vendors will have only ssp or you can configure only one SSP or eight or whatever. So, but just as information for you that every SSP for sure will be associated with with a system information block type one. Uh, so moving forward now, let's try to translate to this part, how the user, for example, will, will be able to detect the SIB one and uh, based on the SIB one, he will be able to read the other system information and other information about the course set and so on. Okay, moving forward. As I just highlighted to you, the first step will do once the user is making the initial access, he will be reading the master information block. Again, in the master information block, there will be some information trans transferred here called BCH configuration for system information block type one. This is the two information which I ex explained in the previous slide. For example, here it's telling him this is core set. This is the search space for system information block type one. So now the user received the control source set zero. Here telling him the index. This means he will know how many resource blocks are being used and how many symbols and so on. And what is uh, the frequency domain position. And the search space zero is telling him where is the time domain. So now that you users have all the information about the search space of the system information block type one. So he will be able to deduce the information of the system block type one. So once he did this part, now he will be able to make the blind detection. And once he make the blind detection, he will find the system information. He will be able to deduce the system information block type one, which carry another information, very important as well. For example, for the common search space, this common search space, uh, it can be like um, for the other system information, for the badging and many other stuff, for all, all the other information. But let me give you some brief about the information inside here. Okay. You can see here that C1 now is instructing the UE, telling him about other information about other search space ID. For example, the previously system information block type using search space ID zero. 
here now it's giving him another information this information just to guide him where he's supposed to go and make the blind detection for the other uh, information and so on for example here the the, the, the the network in this particular thing here is telling him that for example the number of first of all telling the merging symbol within the slot is telling this is giving him the starting symbol of the search space telling him the starting symbol will be the first symbol okay and secondly here it's telling the number of candidates the network the user have no any information about the aggregation level and so on. He's all is just trying to make blind detection. So in this case, the network here is trying to limit the options of the users. For example, here the aggregation level is telling him you can play around, you can make the blind detection within only these three aggregation level, four, eight, and sixteen. It can make one and two if you are speaking about the dedicated or the UE specific, but this is only for the command. The UE specific information will be delivered within the RSU configuration message. So in this case, for example, you can disable sixteen. You can just keep 4 and 8. So the user will know that he can make blind detection within 4 and 8 and so on. And here it's telling him that this is format 00 and format 10 is going to be used. So now the user is informed about the other information related to, for example, system information, uh, other system information blocks or paging and so on. Uh, this is moving forward now. Now, once you do, uh, once this information get the, the user is again making blind detection using the control channel element and so on. We have two types: something called non-interleave mapping and interleave mapping. You need to go through this kind of details, but interleave mapping just like the users will be able to make like in consecutive order for the uh, CCEs once they make the blind detection. For example, they can have if you are talking about uh, six REG or uh, six it means six to this six resource blocks or REG will be in consecutive order. And uh, the inter inter interleave mapping, this is not in consecutive order. As you can see, this is non-consecutive order, and this is allowing the frequency diversity stuff and so on. And this is all settings is being configured within the BTS and so on. So lastly, the once users have this kind of information, he will now be able to get the DCI information. So he will be able to receive his resource allocation and so on. For example, as you remember, I told you, you have three type of DCI, zero, one, and two. Zero for uplink allocation. So we'll get the information about the resources related to the uplink, whether it's related to which, which service, uh, even upload or acknowledgement or whatever. And for DCI1, it's for the downlink resource application, same concept. And DCI2 for you, common group signaling, such as paging and so on. Moving forward to the last part of today uh, video, it's about the BDCHP informing feature. Uh, as you may know that uh, BDCHP informing is was not being supported in 5G, uh, in 4G I mean. 4G used to support only BDCH. So uh, enabling this feature kind of give a, a very good gain in, 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 in the performance because BDCHP informing can be applied to improve the coverage of the BDCH and that currently can be reflected in the user experience because now you can have some kind of balance between BDCH coverage and BDCH coverage. Uh, so moving forward about this part, we have two types of uh, BDCH beamforming uh, in 5G, something called for the common beamforming and something for the user beamforming. Actually, if, if the BDCH is being used to allocate BDCH resources for the transmission, for example, for the paging of the system information, this is called common beamforming because this is related to the search space uh, for the common channels. <clears throat> And and this then this BDCS is likely to use the beam forming <coughs> as a set of the SSP blocks, okay? And this is which means it's more wider and so on. And actually in this in this particular case, the BDCS transmission will be required to, across all the SSP positions as shown here. And this to ensure that the messages are being broadcast across the entire cell area or cell area coverage. This has to make sure that this kind of common messages are being delivered to all the users. This is the first type of the common beam forming, which can be used the SSP blocks to uh, uh, calculate the beam forming gain, uh, beam forming wages, and so on. The second type, it, it's about the user beam forming, and user beam forming, it can be translated into the data transfer. For example, if the BDCH is being used for data transfer, such as downlink or uplink, so in this case, we can be using user beam forming and user beam forming, this would be dedicated for this particular user. So this actually can be using uh, one of two things, even uh, based on CSIRS uh, beam forming to calculate the beam forming weightage, which is, we can say that based on the BMI feedback from the user to the BTS. 
or based on the channel reciprocity and all these kind of things i believe it's it's vendor specification each vendor can have his own uh, his uh, his own his own features and so on but this is just in general the types of the beam forming in, uh, in bdch and as mentioned this can have a good gain in the bdch coverage and so on and uh, that's it for today's video and i hope if you like uh, today video contents please press like uh, subscribe to the channel and spread the word and share it with your with your friends thank you very much and see you in the next video